All right, let's all stand tonight. We're going to worship the Lord.
separate even if I ran away your love never fails no I still make mistakes but you have no mercy for me every day your love never fails You stay the same through the ages And your love never changes And maybe pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Cause I know that you love me Your love never fails Your love never fails yeah. The wind is strong and the water's deep Open seas, cause your love never fails. The chasm was far too high. I never thought I'd reach the other side. Cause your love never fails. You stay.
Your presence. 
Let's lift our hands in this place. Yeah. Won't you let this be sacrifice? Let us dedicate our lives to worship. Won't you let this be sacrifice? Let me dedicate my life to worship. chapter 14 that we know where the woman came busting through she didn't need an invitation because she didn't get one but she brought something that was precious to her that she brought before the master I guess when she heard he was in town that she couldn't put it off till tomorrow she didn't want a moment to pass her by of his presence being there without her saying thank you there's different different uh, beliefs I've heard some great messages on who she was but all I know for sure is she had an amazing encounter with the master that brought forth a response that was priceless, precious for her. Father, as we enter into this week, God, how can we but pass up, but come and drive out on a Sunday night to say, God, more than a sermon, Lord God, more than anything, we've busted through these doors. God, to come into your presence. God, not even, not that it's bad, but it's not even in this moment that we're asking for anything or if there's anything. The only thing we've come for is you and your presence. And just for the moment to pour out our hearts before you and say, thank you. Come on, is there anybody here tonight that you have a heart that you're ready to say thank you tonight? God, I just thank you for the same type of an encounter with your people. Lord, that brings forth a response. A response in such a way they cannot hold back from giving you praise and worship. To where they look around in their life and say, what is it that I can give? What can I pour out before you, God? What I love, it wasn't even that he was asking for it, but... She didn't wait to hear what he was asking for. She just looked around at something that she could give. And so tonight, God, at Gateway, we are here to pour out of our hearts, Lord. Lord, the precious ointment of the broken hearts of your people poured out before you here tonight. And we've come to say thank you. We've come to worship you, Lord. We don't need anybody to coach us. We don't need anybody to inspire us. God, we come giving you our tears, giving you our thank you, giving you our adoration and our love. Come on, Gateway. Let's pour it out tonight. Lift up your voices. Come on. Come on, lift up those voices. Lift up those voices. God, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. Lord, we just pour out before you the very thing that we have. Lord, our whole heart, our whole heart before you, God.
ministry team makes your way up here. As the ministry team comes. about is that to enter into through the gate it comes through thanksgiving and through praise something that we know so just as a gesture tonight i know that we're ready to go from the transition of where we are to where god wants us to be and this transition comes as we enter in through some thanksgiving and through some praise and so tonight if you're ready to step through this transition obviously you're going to line up on this side the ministry team and the pastors we're going to spend some time praying tonight for you as you come through but tonight lord as just an action god that we are entering into god that we're stepping through here tonight god we come passing through the gate lord into your courts lord with thanksgiving and with praise and so if that's you tonight just go ahead and line up over here ushers you know how to help us out tonight as we begin to come through and we're just going to be praying I want you to get ready that this be the most incredible week the most incredible week of breakthrough for your transition to that next season in your life worship team let's continue here tonight God we just thank you Lord God we thank you in Jesus name God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I just want to bless your name. Lord, hearts of worship. And I just want to make you. Hearts of worship, Lord. They have encounters with you, God. I just want to move you. that brings a response and I just want to bless your name and I just want to make you proud I just want to move your heart God your voices tonight.
say his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
we thank you for you are good and your mercy endures forever, Lord. And we just thank you, God, that tonight the redeemed of the Lord say so, God. We give you the expression of our praise, the expression of our thanksgiving, God. We love you so much, and we just thank you that you're a God that still touches and moves today. Lord, we love you so much. We love you so much, Lord. We just pour out our worship to you here tonight, Lord. We just thank you. I thank you for the transition, Lord, of people stepping into their tomorrow here right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, in your own words, just begin. Come on, right now, just close those eyes. Just begin to love on him. Oh, God. 
What can touch your heart? Who can touch your heart? Like the Master. Lord, I just thank you tonight, God, for the breakthrough, Lord, happening in the lives of your people. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, of stepping through with thanksgiving. God, that with joy that is set before them. We just thank you for the realigning of hearts and attitudes and positions of mindsets, oh God. We just thank you for your touch. We thank you for the divine encounters happening with your people that bring forth a response that bring forth the response of giving all in Jesus name everybody said amen and amen amen I'm so glad you came tonight you've come into a special night I don't know if you can feel in the atmosphere but I loved when Rebecca, you were singing. Um, the whole night's been wonderful. But I see heaven moving in this place. God, we thank you for the activity of heaven. Lord, that's here in this place going with us. Lord, that goes with us into our homes this week. And we just thank you. We just thank you. We just thank you. You know, we've got um, a precious, minister, precious ministers of the gospel with us this evening, and and tonight um, they've been with us for over a month. But it, I always say they sneak up on us, and well, I said they sneak up on us, and then they leave sneaking out. Even though it's not, it's just my memories that way. But um, God has brought us together, we know, for an eternal purpose. And um, the first time that I got to meet this woman of God was obviously at the marriage, at the wedding with, with Tom and, and Pastor Lydia and Laseba Honduras. And I was amazed at getting a chance to see a wonderful church called Eagle's Nest Church. They walk in an amazing love and an amazing giftings and, and heart for evangelism and, and for miracles and healings as well. And walking into their church, it was something you don't feel everywhere, but it felt like that at home. It felt like as if it was just like us here walking into Honduras at this church as we walked in on that first night into the service. And uh, th through the, the, the years, I've been able to see her heart and their ministry and obviously um, all the things that they do. It's just a, an honor and a pleasure. And tonight, I want you uh, to put your hands together and welcome with us Pastor Lydia and Tom. Come tonight. And
<laughs> you know, one thing is that we, we know is, is uh, you have a special husband that we uh, say. Really special. Yes. yes. Really, really special. <laughs> Good night, everybody. It's a pleasure for us to be here. I want to let my husband talk him because I got to talk him after him a lot. <laughs> Okay, obviously she's going to minister tonight. You know, one thing we want to say is thank you so much for each and every one of you and how you participated in the giving of donations for Honduras. And we, you, we really want to express the impact that it made. Literally thousands of people received Jesus as their Lord and Savior because we were able to give them a toy, give them a piece of clothing, or whatever it might have been. And not only that, but more than half of them were children. And uh, the Lord's really put it on our heart. I guess it's because of where I know I'm birthed from to minister to the children and we know that it's going to have a lasting impact and all for the glory of the kingdom of God so we just want you to know that you know when when you give however it may be whether it's prayers financially or donations or whatever you know we we love being your hands and feet out there in Honduras and uh, there's a great impact being made for the kingdom of God. Well, anyway, my wife, like I said, she's going to minister tonight, and I know that she's done it once before here, or twice, or whatever, but I just want you to know that she's learning English, she's getting better at English, but if there's anything that you don't understand, I want you to know what she's saying. I'm going to go ahead and translate it now, like I did last time. What she's saying is, I love my husband, I honor my husband, I submit to my husband, and my husband has good-looking legs. Well, that's true. <laughs> so with that, here, here she is. Thank you, Thomas. I want to say thank you to everybody in the name of Eagerness Church, everyone, children, job people, and other people. Everyone was working for six, almost six months. We don't have shows to rest. I come in to rest after all this job that we have. And I want to tell you, it's not only the impact about the almost 4,000 people receive Jesus. 60% is children because we visit. Um, maybe 30 schools because you have to find the children they are in the school and we have to go in the public school and we get we talking with the principal and they open the door and this is a door open for other projects that we want to start this year and praise the Lord for that you know maybe that's kind of happen see we don't receive the provision that we receive from you guys because as you doing this, there's 4,000 soul, you win this 4,000 soul. We do job a lot. Everyone in the church, you know, we participate. We fool the cars, everyone, they have the car. Everyone, they have the time. Everyone, we going together, children, youth, and other people. And it's amazing what the Lord is doing. We also visit, uh, we had together 150 pastors because we received a lot of teaching material. And I want to tell you, teaching material for the study Bible in Honduras is really gold in Honduras. Because you have to buy and it's so expensive. But in this time, they receive packages. We're making packages to give everyone the same quantity, the book for everyone. For sure, they have to make copy, but we share with 150 pastors. In this moment, and we say one part because we go a mission trip next next January. Next January we go on 8 to 13. I want to ask you for praying because we go with a group of 20 people. Everyone is raising the money to go in because we pay everything, everyone. 
and we got to bring this material in this area, Antigua, Guatemala. We had a contact there. This man is finding many churches. We go to minister in churches, but also we go to minister in all the area, the uh, Antigua. Antigua is a really Catholic area. They have many churches, the more antique churches that you can build in, that you can imagine. They had a beautiful building there, but it's a lot of religion. And we go with the purpose to helping those pastors that they calling us and say, we know that you making one treat in the years, the mission treat, and we want that you come in inside. We go on this time, we go, we bring with us 20 people, those 20 people, 15 is a brand new people. They, they should receive Jesus six months ago. This is the way that we train in them because where I go to ministry about that, you know, about the passion, the produce, the, the fire of the Lord in our heart. And I, I want to ask you for, we pray in this moment. Father, thank you for the opportunity that you've given to us to minister to your people. Father God, we know the wisdom, the wisdom and the revelation is coming from you through your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you bring with me and all this time, and you do what you can do. It. I know you can do it better than me. I love you. I love you, and I say thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, this night, let me take a little rest. I am so stressed. I was... I was looking the ministry of Jesus Christ, and when I look at Jesus walking in this land, I can see the great passion in his heart for looking, you know, that passion that produced the fire in the, in the presence of the Lord. When Jesus died, he knew, he knew what he is doing. Maybe the disciples, they don't understand. But he knew what he is doing. He has to go into the cross. He has to die in the cross. He has to reign from the dead because that power that raised him from the dead is the same power that he shared with his disciples through the Holy Spirit when they was in the upper room. And they received the same fire. The Bible says when you read Acts 2 that this was a big, big song. Everybody can hear the song. But it's not only that, they can see the fire over each one's another. And when I see that scripture, I say to the Lord, I understand what John the Baptist, what, when the Jesus Christ is talking about the John the Baptist, he's talking this, about this. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John the Baptist said that. He said, I am Baptist in water, but the one is coming after me. He got to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And I was asking to the Lord, Lord, what is two? Two baptized or is two together? And he told me it's two together. And how I receive the baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know how, how we receive the salvation, by faith. When I receive Jesus, I really don't see Jesus. But when the people is talking about what Jesus is doing in the cross for me, my eyes was open. My spirit was open. And I opened my heart. And I said, yes, I do. I receive Jesus into my heart. And when that happened, I do it by faith. And I start to walk in by faith. I receive every word in the Bible by faith. To believe every word. And I put this word in my heart. And I start to move in and believing in what the Lord says in that Bible. Where in the same way you receive that by style in the Holy Spirit and fire. In the Holy Spirit, because he said in Act 1a, you go to receive power when coming over you. I don't say your version, I say my version. <laughs> in my English. <laughs> he says you go to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Power to be a witness. To be witnesses. It's a power that move in you. To, to win the soul for the kingdom of God. It's that it's witness that they making you the gone out to your comfortable space that you have. Because when we come into Jesus, we receive a love from Jesus. How we like to be there when we receive him. You don't know. I love it. 
I know when I am in the present, I don't want to cook. I, I am hungry. I really, I am hungry to more, more, more. But in a moment, the Lord spoke to me and said, it's okay that you receive. But what you receive, you have to give. Because you have to give for receive more, something new that I want to bring to you. Do you know we never stop to receive in the present to the Lord? We always, it's something new happen in your life every time that you go on your knees to seek in the present of the Lord. Every time. A new word. It's a new, it's a new tie, the Lord talking to me. It's a new voice. And sometimes I feel so more sweet, that voice in my spirit. And I, I, I can feel how he loved me, how he hugged me. And I can understand what he wanted in my life. And you know, when I see this, I, was, I, understand, I understand the receipt the baptism of the Holy Spirit is more the receipt the speaking tongue. It's more than that. It's more, it's good that you receive the tongue. But I, you know, I see many people that they are baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they never testify about Jesus. They never talking about Jesus. And that's, what is this happen? Well, because when they receive the baptism and the Holy Spirit, they receive the tongue. And we love the tongue. We don't know in some time what we're saying. But we enjoy to be there. And you feel that present in your life. But you know what? When do you activate in your life the passion, the fire is different. Because that fire produces not only the tongues. Produce that you be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're talking directly with God. It's true. But also you receive the passion in here inside. I don't know if you can feel that when you speak in tongue. But it's coming from here. It's from your belly. Something is coming up. And it's jumping. Has to jump in. Not only in talking. Has to jump in, in my attitude. I have to go outside. I have to tell something what is going on in my life. What Jesus is doing. What is the brand new thing that God wants I do for him. <laughs> you know, I, when I really think, thinking about that, I say, Lord, what is the problem? What the people, they never talking. They never testified. And he told me. It's because that's happened when the people coming in the presence of the Lord and that's passion. It's, you know, you are anointing in that moment when you come in in the presence of the Lord, you active. Active? No. Activate. Thank you. You activate. That's anointing that God gives you to give it to you. When you receive Jesus, when you receive the baptism and the Holy Spirit, that's Activate you the passion to be the soul and see the people when I look in different. Because you see the people, you see your boss is not really good every week and some weeks he, he get all good and other weeks he don't get all good. And when you go to your job and you see these people, you look in different. When you have the passion, it's different. When you only receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you only speak in tongues and like, a, you know, soul feasting that I am here, I have this, I don't matter who don't have, I got it. You know? But when you receive this passion for the fire of the Lord, you look at the people, you start to feel pain for them. And you look at their whole day, are looking for be happy and they cannot be happy because they don't have what you and me we have the presence of the lord that fire the burning my spirit when i see one person that don't have jesus you know what when i see i see the result to the fire of god in my life every time i decide to talking about this because it's happening in my life you know jesus talking about john the baptist and john 5 35 and he said that the John the Baptist is a torch. Is good? Yeah? Torch? Okay. A torch? Okay. That. It's a torch. And he said, when he talking about John the Baptist, he said, no one other man, no one other man got to be like John the Baptist. He truly was a lamp, a light over the table. Everyone can see his life. And he, everyone can see and he's sharing the light to other people. 
because he brings much a lot of soul and repenting. They say, Yes, I want to repent of my sin. And it was a strong the way that he preached. I don't know if we preach in this time, like that's the way the pastor John with the Baptist doing. I don't know how many people we had in this church. Because he, he, he said, a snake. They say, my God. And the people come and running, asking, because they need Jesus. They need something. They have the religion, but the religion don't fool the spirit. They want to be full with the Holy Spirit. They don't understand. Until John the Baptist, he don't have what we have. He don't have it at that moment. He only had the promise. He only had the commandment. And he moving and obey. And what he did produce a fruit. How more and more now that we have the Holy Spirit. And he is the one that talking for us. He is the one that talking and convinced the people for the sin. And he did. And it's amazing. For that reason, I say, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. This is amazing. That you're talking about this man. This is a truly lamp. This is a truly lie. This is a truly torch. He was up and everybody can see his, his witnesses, his testimony. Everyone can see that. And he say that he chose to order the life of Jesus. He said, I'm not talking about me. It's other coming back to me. I only are preparing his way. Are you ready for this? And they coming. And they coming and they repent about the sin. You know what? You cannot be in life See, you don't have the fire. You can have the Holy Spirit. And you can be baptized in tongues. You can have gifts. A lot of gifts. And you can be happy here. You can die and don't do nothing with all that God gives you to you. But you know what? There's no, nothing happens. If I don't have the fire, and the fire produces passion to use what everything that the Lord given to me to use it produce fruit. Because that's as the Bible says. You know, when I see this, I see what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 14, 16. He said that we are the light of this world. There's no other way that the people outside can see Jesus, can see the life of Jesus, because Jesus is the light. He said, I am the light. I am the way. I am the truth. No one can see that. See, we don't show the light. And the light is in me. It's in you. It's easy to, the other people can see Jesus now. We see by faith. But they can see Jesus in us. Because he is in me. And I say, oh Lord, it's a big responsibility you give me to, you give in to me. Because you want to show everybody that Jesus is real. Well, how the people can see when he see your life being transformed. How Jesus changed your life. You don't are the same that you was in the beginning to this year. You don't are the same. No mercy, you think and you tear because you are doing something, you may be wrong, and you say, No, I don't think so, I change tomorrow. But you know what? Something changed in your life. Because every word that you hear and your spirit transform your life, clean your heart, clean everything in you. That's producing me, I know for sure, producing you. You know, Jesus, when he coming, he coming for a church with two things important. A church that is living in revival. And what revival mean? Revival means transformation. Revival means living the truly life of Jesus. Enjoying your life, your Christian life. No matter what is going on in your life, you enjoy your presence. The presence of the Lord, you enjoy that. You like to do everything what he tells you that you have to do. In. Living in revival. But also in a fire for the harvest. You know, Jesus coming for a short they have heart, love for the people that is lost. And when these people come into Jesus, and you can be happy for that. One person, one person is a big thing in my life. One child, they say yes. When, when we are preaching to the child, it's amazing when you preach to the child. Because they, 
Jesus, for that reason, said that we, be, we have to be like a child. Because they believe everything. They don't mean nothing. They don't question nothing to you. They only open their hand and say, yes, I want. They don't make it not a big deal to say, yes, I. And they do in the pray so loud. Jesus, I receive into my heart. They yell. Everyone, the teacher, I remember the teacher, do it more slow. No, I say no. They have to do it how they want it. They are showing us. The children is showing us how do we need to do it. You know, that's fire. No, produce passion for saving soul, but also produce purifies and sanctifies. You know, when I see the Bible, one, God wants to bring us his fire into our life. He don't want that you be only a, a Christian, normally Christian. He want a Christian with fire. And I was impressed when I go in the line. This was God talking to me. And those ladies start to pray for me. They say, fire of the Lord. Oh, my God, Lord, I want more. <laughs> because, yeah, fuego. Maria, you know, Mary and me, we understand. <laughs> You know, when do you have a real experience with the Holy Spirit? How do you activate this passion? When do you go to the presence of the Lord? And I am so glad. I was telling someone this morning, every time I come into the church, it's a refresh. I think a pastor Dave, I was talking to him. Every time I come into this place, every time I hear the worship team here, ministry, Everything changes in my life. And it's no matter that I am pastor. Because it's not about me. It's about enjoy. That you know that he is there. He has been to your life. And I, I, I can change that for everything. No matter how most precious can be other things. To be in that moment. You know, you don't have to cut that. It's amazing that you are here every Sunday night. Because the Holy Spirit is taking control. And you have to let him go in your life, inside. Refresh your bonds. <laughs> How many do you refresh the bonds every Sunday night? It's amazing. <laughs> we are, you know, I start to feel in my body some part that's not going like 20 years ago. But when do you go to the present to the Lord, he purifies, he sanctifies every time because that fire that his present born, everything that is not good in my spirit, everything is not good in my mind, everything is not good in my body, sickness or whatever thing that's in my, in my body, everything is born by the Holy Spirit. Through this fire that he put in my spirit. It's not only to bring soul to the kingdom. It's about that he wants to work in with me. Because he cannot share not, I cannot share nothing that I don't have. Yeah. I has to have. You know, living with Jesus as an experience every day, every minute, you experience the presence of the, the Jesus Christ. And when you have that, you can share. It's easy to share. And you got to be a normal people for God. Maybe for other people, you got to be like a weird. What happened with this? <laughs> what happened with this man? <laughs> you know, but for God, you got to be the normal people that he created. A man and a woman to worship him in holiness. And he wants to be, he wants that we be holy, like he is holy. But you have to go in the present because it's a new experience every time. And when I go to this, and this experience to go in the present to the Lord, I have to be humble. I cannot be, well, Lord, I am pastor, I cannot cry in here. Oh, oh Lord, I'm sorry, I have makeup, today I don't go to cry. Let your tear go on. What we have tears. I was asking them. Why we have tears? Because the Lord knows that we need it. We have to be humble. You have to go 
and their, and their knees. I really love one song that you guys singing here. What is Tonya? I sing it to you. I don't want to sing it in English. <laughs> I, I want to be, in, no, don't say like that, but I want to say in my English. I want, I want to see it in your feet. And I'll put my heart, I, I don't know, but something that I got to be like this. And he's sitting and he was touching me and I can hear his heart. That's what we're talking about. And when do you do that, it's because do you go up in your knees? When do you go like this? And when do you go like this? You are no more higher. He is the higher. And he received the honor. And your life is transforming. And in this moment, you understand it's, it's not about me, Lord. I understand that. Every time I go there, I was a cry to the Lord to be a humble woman. That I never got to say, oh, no, I don't need to study more. I don't need to go more in the presence of the Lord. I can preach this. No, I have to go in. Because he is the one that gives him what his people want, what his people need. I don't know. I can be a standard and talking whatever thing. No, not only. But what God to produce in your life? It's about what I receive in that moment. He's, he really purified my mind and my hair. And sometimes, you know, that moment that you are angry with, I don't know, with whatever people or something, someone doing something in your life. And you don't want to go to pray because you know what happens when you go to pray. You're broken. Or you're broken or you're broken. <laughs> and I say, I, I, and sometimes I, I am in rebellion with the Lord. I don't want to go pray. And he's calling me. You know, it's the Holy Spirit always. He's a fire. Come in. I need you. I need you. I, I want to talk into you. I want to give you this. And I say, no, I don't want. And I remember Jonah. This is the reason that Jonah don't want to preach to Nineveh. I don't know how to say in English, but it's Nineveh is the name. He don't want to go in because he knows Jesus. He knows God. He knows his heart. You can see that this man had a good intimacy with God. He knows God. It's not that he don't know. He was angry. I know that you got to forgive them. I knew it that. And I say, Lord, and sometimes I am like that. But I have to be humble in your presence. You know, something I learned like a pastor, like a member in the church, because I was a member for 24 years in one church. And I, I was so, I had obedience with my pastor. I was honored to my pastor. And when I, when I lead to this church, he told me, the more that I go to feel pain is because you live and you really obey me in all that you to I told you. I learned that you have to be humble. This is my boy. <laughs> you know, When we go to the presence of the Lord, that fire reveals what do you have in your heart. What you really have in your heart, in your heart, 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 in your heart. First Corinthians 3, 13, talking about the fire, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the word of each one, which is the fire, will prove it. Is okay? What does what does mean? In every moment, every day, is is possible. You have to check in yourself, but you cannot check in yourself outside to the present to the Lord. <laughs> when I check in myself outside to the present to the Lord, I justify everything in me. I don't have no one for telling me, hey, you do this wrong. 
when I check in myself, and I am selfish in this moment. I don't know if you, it's happened with you, but it happened with me. <laughs> and I want, I want to, okay, Lord, I want to check in me. And I start to say, well, I am good in this. I am good in this. And not so proud or selfish. I really know that I was selfish. And sometimes the Lord stuck to me when I am talking like that. He said, go to my presence. And we go to talking there. And when I go to the present to the Lord for shaking myself, you have to make an attempt by yourself. You don't need the old one prophet coming here to tell you, hey, you. Many people don't want the prophet praying for them because they, oh my God, okay, go to tell me what I do wrong. You don't have to do that. You know, because what, he wants to, that you know, because he knows already what we're doing wrong. God, we can all, you know. He knows already. But are we, and sometimes we, touch, we try to cover our sin. You know, we try to cover, and that's just to be selfish because we don't want to change something that we think, and this is good for me. I want to have this. I want to have this. This attitude is good in me. And we excuse. No, I am like that way because everybody produces pain in my life. I have to be, you know, like a ready. If someone says something about me, he got to know me. You know? <laughs> but when I go to the present to the Lord, and I start to justify, he don't accuse me. But he told me, you know, Lydia, I am really so proud of you about this. He started like that. He is good. <laughs> you know, I am so proud of you about this. I really love what you had this or this, but you know what, honey? You had this that you have to change. And when I don't want to accept, he said in a prophet. <laughs> There's no way that you can be saying. <laughs> it's better that you go to the press and open your heart and say, okay, Lord, I am here. I know I had this. I had this. You know, to be sincere. It's not easy because no one teaching us to be like that. We come in from the world that everybody covered with something in the face. Here, they are crying. And here, hello, God bless you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. And here, <laughs> in depression, in torment. Well, when do you go to the Lord? He told you, and he so, I say he's so sweet to talking to me. How I can resist the love that he had for me. He don't want to judge me. He don't want that. He only want to fix my life. Because he know what is the, the better that I have to do. And he told me, he already told me, you have to need this correction, to do in this correction in your life. It's not good if you don't call in a good friend when someone calling you and say, you know, you are my body. You are a good person for me. But I see this in your life. I really think that you have to change in this. When some person is my friend, I appreciate that they tell me the truth. I don't want that someone want to please me because I don't need this type of friends. We need person that really truly tell you, you know, this is not good in your life. I think that you can change is that. I told you because I love you. I want that you change. And it's the same with Jesus. He want that we have truly knowledge about what is in my heart. The last thing that I go to talk him. Because someone told me, when someone starts to sleep and you have to cut. <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke. <laughs> Luke 4, 18, 19. That's fire. That's fire producing my life, revival. When I see Jesus Christ talking about revival, it's a lot of things in revival. We call it revival. I want to tell you how the people mean revival in Honduras. They call it revival to this. Hey, hallelujah. Yes, holy glory to God. You know, dancing and show with the people with dance with many expressions. They call it revival. 
And on a, it's a part of being revival. You have to sing. <laughs> you have to sing, no matter what. <laughs> no, no matter what is going on, you have to sing to the Lord. But this is not only revival. Luke 4, 18. Jesus is saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, giving good news to the poor. And he started with the more important thing that we have to have focus in the church and not life. Because when Jesus made me his church, because I am the church, you are the church. Every one of us is the church of the Lord. He is the head. And we are the body. We all together conform the body of Christ. Every Christian in every part of the world, one day we go to coming together. And he got to be over us. And you know, when I see that, I see that Jesus Christ, he said he was anointing to preaching good news, to giving good news to the poor. And when he was talking about the poor, it's not talking only about physically or economic poor. He's talking about, about the poor of the spirit. The people that had hungry for Jesus, and they don't know that they have hungry for something. They find, they trying to find, in, you know, and drown stuff, and, and smoke something. They trying to find in everything. But what really, truly they need is Jesus Christ. They are hungry. And sometimes when we were talking with someone, I, I want to tell you, I training my people at that way, the first time that they go to ministry outside. Okay, are you ready? Yes, we are ready. When we go to the downtown, and we go to the bus station, we are, we making group, the four or three, and I tell, you go to preach, you go to give the tracks, you go to be ready for someone want to box in a, the one that go to preaching, and the other one go to talking with the bus driver, because you has, you has to ask for permits. And you know how our bus is. <laughs> yes. They they walk him. Uh, and when we go inside, we go inside to the boss. And you have to go like this. And with a Bible in your hands. You know, because you know, and everybody is uh, excuse me, excuse me. And you has to preach and so low because we don't have microphone there. <laughs> it's good that the, the boss is moving because you cannot see the legs of everyone <laughs> like that. We're taking everyone. To do this. You know what? Because the fire, the, the Bible says that the people, they don't know that they need Jesus. they trying to find another style like you and me. I, I, I remember in my past when I was younger, well, my God, I danced and danced in all the street. We're doing a carnival in Honduras. It's so famous in, all, in the principal street in La Ceiba. It's so dangerous. I don't know how I go there all the time. And I go and I, I, I think I, I done a lot of shoes. They're dancing in the street. Can you believe that? Yes, I do. <laughs> I, every discotheque, every, I never drink, I never smoke, I never do bad, bad thing. But I do this. And I was so faithful with the devil when I do something. For that reason, you know, everything that was faithful outside got to be faithful here with God. That's it for sure. When truly it's changed this person. The Bible said, I didn't know what I need. I was trying to find in my life something that I miss. I miss my innocence. One family guy take my innocence and not your all. He take him. He abused me for five years, four or five years. And not only me. My other five cousins, gears, all gears. And no one now. We cannot say nothing. If you say something, I kill you. I lose that. And the first time that someone preaching to me, I say, where was Jesus when that happened? What Jesus are you talking about? I was missing something. But you know what? The day when do you really go in the anointing and the passion of the Lord, no one can resist that. Because when that's, it's an American woman 
touch my door. A missionary American with her husband. He don't want to go to touch the door, but she was. And she invited me to go to the church. I said, no, oh, yes, I'm going. You know how we say, i going when we never go. <laughs> I never go. He talking to me and said, I want to pray for you. Because this is the first question that she told me. Jesus loves you. See, Jesus loves you. What has happened to me? What has happened? And she told me, I can answer you this, this question. See, you come into my church tomorrow at 1 o'clock. She has wisdom. <laughs> you know what? I have more wisdom. I don't go at 1. <laughs> I don't go at 1. And she come back to my house. She had more wisdom. <laughs> and I was telling to my sister, say, I don't hear. I don't, I don't know here. I hear you, she told me, uh-oh. Or I really don't want to go, I said. I don't really want to go. Well, I had an answer for you for your question. And she, I say, okay, come in here. She coming inside. She start to talking. I don't receive Jesus this day. But all the pain that I have is to start to disappear. I learned this word this week. <laughs> it started to disappear. She leave, and I start to go to the church. I go three months. Every word, one pastor preaching is important. Every smile, every hand that you stress is so important. I remember that lady was in front every day in this in that door. Hello, Lydia. Nice to see you. And she hugged me, and I don't want that no one hold me. You know, I was so angry. I don't want no one close to me. I don't want no more pain. And I remember she, she every day, she said, ah, this is your seat. I was sitting in the last one. When I want to eat, I go. I never go, because I really am a person that I respect, and I don't like to go. And I remember the one lady coming from USA also. And she started to talking about her testimony. <laughs> when she talking about her testimony, I was so amazed. Because I was thinking they had a bad life. They can, whatever person can have. But when I hear her, I really understand the other person had more pain than you or me. And that's day they, they don't call for receive Jesus. It's so important to make a call in the last minute, no matter what time. To see someone want to receive Jesus. You can put your hand up in this night and you can do it. She don't do it. We go home and I don't know how to do it. Well, I go to my bed and I sit down. I remember and say, okay, I don't know how to do this, Lord, but... The only one, the only thing that I want is you living here. I say that. And the next Sunday I go to the church. And I, well, the pastor is American, big guy, like Charles. He, so he was a military. He was so strong. Who wants to receive Jesus? You don't know see the people pass because they are afraid or because he had authority? I don't know. And he re, he, re, he making a call and I go in the front. I was crying. I was crying like you can imagine. I was thinking this yesterday is happening. I give my heart to Jesus Christ. You have to preach to the poor. The reason that we exist is because other people have to know about Jesus. You are free. You have revival in your life. You are living a Christian life. You had a pastor that carried you. You know, the Lord giving to you provision. He healed your, your spirit, everything, your body, everything that you need is in Jesus. Because in that look for 18, you can see the, the Lord coming. He has sent to me, healed the broken heart. 
He sent it to me to give liberty to the captives. I don't know if you understand, but the Holy Spirit told me this night, tell to my people that they have to talk him with the power of the Spirit. They are around you. You don't have to go maybe in a mission tree. Maybe you call it it's close to your house. Maybe it's in the school. Maybe it's in the supermarket. Maybe it's your neighbor. You don't know. For me, I am so impressed. Every time that someone give me the award, what the Lord want with me, it's made me amazed. But something that I, that I told to the Lord, I want to live to say to the people that Jesus is the answer. I find my answer. I just changed my life forever. The only reason for the one I want to live is for him and for every people that need help. You know, and sometimes we don't understand when we say revival. That revival is inside of you. That's fire. That's passion inside of you. See, you don't have that. It's really inside because you receive Jesus. You receive the Holy Spirit. You only need to activate what you have inside. Say to the Lord, I don't want to be a Christian. This is when Jesus is talking with the, in, the, in Revelation and the final the Revelation. That he was talking with one of the churches. He said, I have something. That I, want to, I want to tell you I don't like. That you lose. You lose. You feel love. You know what this fear love is? It's this passion. When you, when you don't care about no one. It's only about you. You lose your first love. And when you lose this, you lose everything. Because it's no more purpose in your life for living. You are here, you're going, you're back, you're going, you're back, but nothing happened. When revival is, your life changes. And you make the, the lives of other people change. And this is the church that the Lord is crying for. It's a church that love the people. I wonder you can stand on a minute. Ah, it's better. <laughs> you know something? When I was so little, it's so important to care the, the children. I really love to minister children. Because when we're taking children in the kingdom of God, we are saying to Satan, you cannot touch this gift that you've given to us in this church. It's so important that your children has to be ministered every time that you can bring them in the church. You have to do it. Teaching them to go in the presence to the Lord. Teaching them that they had the fire to talk to other children. We cannot lose that. I got to invite Pastor Greg. We can pray. Asking to the Lord that we never lose the first law that we have. Thank you, Pastor Lydia, for your message here tonight. Pouring out your heart. And as she has spoken, God, we just thank you. Lord, that the first love be our love 
for the rest of our days, that it not be lost or grown cold, but God, that there'd be a passionate love for you. God, that stirred in our hearts, that this love that we have, that we do something with it, and that this fire that we call out for and we receive on a regular basis, enable us to be the witness for your kingdom. And we just thank you, God, that this week, that we'll be the best witness that we can be. God, that there will be somebody that makes an eternal impact on someone we come in contact with this week. We thank you for the open doors of leading people to Jesus, helping those that have been depressed or hurt in their life, that, God, we would be a part of setting the captives free this week. In Jesus' name. You know, Pastor Hap, something really ministered to my heart when, when they said, and I don't know if you could understand what they were saying, over 4,000 4, people, souls, have been saved. All the things that we've been giving in containers and Pastor Hap has been paying for, not out of a, a church budget, but out of his personal pocket. And as a result of it, thousands of souls in the kingdom of God. I don't know what that means to you, but that means a whole lot to me. And whether you ever step ground with us on a mission trip to Honduras that uh, we're planning on in June of this coming year, whether you ever go up with us into the mountains or in the boat of the waters to go to Honduras. But there is a seed that you can sow. That the other end of that seed, the result is a kingdom of God advanced. Souls that are saved. 4,000 souls. It's pretty amazing. And tonight, I want you to have the opportunity. They're going back to Honduras this week, and I want to give in to their ministry. And I want to be able to bless them. In Honduras, their church, every day of the week, is putting their hand to something. She didn't really get to share about it, but she's like the mother of the military there. She ministers to the military for years. They've got open doors to the college and the, and the high schools. And that's just, just a portion of what they do. You can see her heart tonight. And I love that she today carries the torch of the Spirit of God beyond the pain of what the devil had done throughout her life and carries the torch of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They get on buses in a third world country, getting on a bus is faith. The way that they drive. When she's talking about them swinging, you could only imagine. Hollywood doesn't do justice of what happens when you're over there. As the ushers are getting ready, you can make your the envelopes out, checks out, out, um, holy, holy, holy ministries. And I mean, obviously, it all goes to the same place, Eagle's Nest, and and uh, to think about being a part of thousands of souls saved in a country. We're crazy enough to believe that a surrendered ministry in a country can turn that country upside down for Jesus. And if Reinhard Bunke can change the continent of Africa, a German man stepping into Africa, and we can start saying now, have you heard the good news? Glenn Carbon is saved. La Seba is saved. Honduras has revival. And our nation and our region of the St. Louis area is in revival. This is our good news that we declare. 
that the light of the glorious gospel invade every dark area of our cities in Jesus name the seed that we hold in our hand tonight God as a seed going forth for souls into the kingdom God beyond the language that we speak God souls into your kingdom in Jesus name everybody said amen amen thank you so much for pouring out your hearts and and I want you guys to love on them tonight and, and uh, just let you ask God what you'd have to do, whether it's a monthly basis that we give. We want to be a part of advancing Hondur the kingdom of God in Honduras. special prayer requests the altars will be open as we close and you can continue to worship if you'd like but for the rest we'll see you this week have an amazing thanksgiving the more i seek